This week, the Ontario government agreed to pay for part of the therapy for a former juror suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder after serving on the trial of the killer of eight-year-old Tory Stafford. It's just one of the cases that has put PTSD in the public eye. Dr. Katy Kamkar is a clinical psychologist with the Center for Addiction and Mental Health's Psychological Trauma Program. And she joins us now for more on PTSD. It's nice to have you back here at Thank TVO. Thank you very much, Steve. How is PTSD generally brought on? I'm so happy that uh, we are talking about this uh, very, very important subject. One, one thing we know about post-traumatic stress disorder is that it can really occur following exposure to actual or threatened death. Uh, violence or serious injury, sexual violence. So for example, it can occur after we are directly experiencing a traumatic event or witnessing the traumatic event occurring to others or learning that the traumatic event has occurred to a family member or a close, uh, close friend. Now in the event of, a, of the traumatic event happening to a close friend or family uh, member, the event must be actually violence or um, accidental. Um, now, for post-traumatic stress disorder, it also occurs after uh, repeated uh, exposure to trauma or extreme exposure to aversive details of the traumatic, uh, traumatic event. And if you have it, what symptoms will you present? There are primarily four main uh, cluster of symptoms. We have the intrusion symptoms, so for example, distressing intrusive memories, flashbacks or sense of relieving the traumatic event, uh, nightmares related to the trauma or related, uh, related events, experiencing psychological di uh, distress upon reminders of the trauma and physiological reactions, shortness of breath or heart pounding. And we also have avoidance, the avoidance symptoms, wanting to avoid any reminders of the trauma. So your life can become quite dysfunctional if you are suffering from absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. And also a belief system can be shattered. So for example, having persistent negative belief about oneself, about the world or the future, difficulty experiencing positive emotions, persistent negative emotions, diminished interest in activities, and of course the arousal symptoms. So mood irritability, angry outbursts, hypervigilance, feeling excessively jumpy, sleep disturbance. Hmm. One of the reasons we wanted to have you on the program today is that I think many people have always been under the impression that PTSD is something you suffer, for example, if you've been in a war zone and our soldiers come back with PTSD. Yes. We heard earlier in the program the fascinating example of somebody who served on a jury where the details were very gruesome. Exactly. And he has now been diagnosed as suffering from PTSD. Exactly. You, so you can, you can, obviously, you can get it even if you haven't been in a war zone but are just seeing pictures. Absolutely, and I think that here now there is a growing understanding and acknowledgement that it's not only victims who have been traumatized, but it also whoever um, who has been in interaction or encounter with the victim, so essentially mm -hmm. vicarious trauma. So of course, any repeated exposure to trauma, now in the case of the jurors, being repeatedly exposed to, to the written material, to the audio, to the visual, pictures, the, the pictures yeah. photographs, gruesome evidence, it does increase our overall stress level, anxiety, and definitely we can feel overwhelmed and make us more vulnerable to symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Let's say though you're in a jury, but you go into the jury room and you're deliberating and there's however many of you in there, 8, 10, 12, well, odd, odd number I guess it would be. Not everybody's going to have the same impact, right? Some exactly. people are going to be able to handle it just fine and other people are going to be PTSD'd mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Can you tell? Well, this is true like for everything that we do for any trauma, whether it's you know in a jury case or generally speaking for any trauma, there are always significant individual differences. Obviously, there are certain risk factors that can increase our vulnerability if you have any prior history to trauma. So for example, in this case, if some of the trauma materials resemble our personal experience, it can make us more vulnerable. But also within the jury experience, it could be a lot of other individual differences. There are a lot of other stressors that we also need to appreciate here. For for example, we know when people have to go through the decision period, that can be very stressful. The sense of self-isolation or the lack of support as people express that they are not able uh, to disclose any, uh, any materials um, outside the jury room. Um, so all of those stressors together uh, can contribute also to individual differences and then also some people could be more at risk than, uh, than others. Um, now, following uh, the, the, the jury, 
some people can experience short-term distress, short-term impact, mm -hmm. others long-term distress, long-term impact. So it could just, you could experience it for a short time and then it just goes away? Um, it, you know, it, it, it can go away, but again, what does go away mean? So mm -hmm. we might have, obviously, the memories or, or uh, you know, certain distress, nevertheless be able to function and experience this sense of quality of life and well-being. But at other times, we can see that, no, the, the symptoms are very cause are injuring, become very prolonged, and affect our overall level of functioning. And it's very important to seek out. Would a younger person be more likely to incur it than an older person? Well, you know, when we talk about uh, mental health problems in general, uh, we know that younger people are always uh, report more uh, mental illness and substance use uh, problems than any other age group. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, people within the older group as well um, are, are very much at risk as well of symptoms of post-traumatic stress. You know, whenever people are within the jury duty, it does take us outside of our daily life, mm -hmm. of our daily responsibilities and routines. So depending on also what went on in our life as well, right? That can be um, another factor as well. This is one of those things I suspect that uh, is a hard sell for some people, right? There are some people who are going to say, suck it up, stiff upper lip, get on with your life. Why do you think it's taken so long for many people to appreciate that post-traumatic stress disorder is a real thing? It's a real thing, definitely. I think that overall we have done a good job in the past, let's say, five or ten years, more so in the five, five years, to really work on reducing the stigma attached to mental health problems and to, you know, hopefully change this attitude, this suck it up and toughen up attitude, because really what does it mean? It just prolongs distress. It prolongs the suffering and disability, and it prevents people from seeking help. And not only the suck kind of attitude, not only it strengthens the stigma, but it's especially here self-stigma. So self-stigma is people start internalizing other people's values and beliefs and they start blaming themselves. Oh, maybe, yes, it's my fault that I'm suffering, that I have this. It is my problem, which then um, it promotes this sense of isolation and suffering and silence. That's a vicious circle in it at that point, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely, Steve. It becomes hmm. a vicious cycle. In which case, how can you, how can we empower more people to come forward to recognize it and get treatment for it. By doing exactly what we are doing. We need to normalize the talking. So the, the bottom line, I think, is very simple. We all human beings. We all need our physical health to be healthy, and we all need our mental health to be healthy. Very simple. Hmm. There, is, there is no health without mental health, just as we already know there is no health without physical health. There is no health without mental health. We need to normalize the talking, and no one is immune to mental health problems. We all affect it directly or indirectly. So just as, as we are doing right now, talking about it, normalizing the talking, and seeking help. I don't know. This is probably not the right use of the word, so you tell me if I'm saying it uh, improperly here. If you have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, can you ever be cured? And is that the right word to use? You know, uh, there are effective treatments available. That's the great news. Of course, the, this is like also like a physical health problems. The earlier we seek help, uh, the, the better prognosis and the outcome. So yes, there are definitely effective treatments. And yes, we can definitely get better and resume a healthy level of functioning. What's a treatment that might work? So, for example, we have um, evidence-based, so scientific-based um, cognitive behavioral uh, treatment, especially for trauma. So we have scientific-based trauma-focused cognitive behavioral treatment consists of cognitive restructuring, various type of exposure interventions, and other skills and strategies to better cope, to better cope with anxiety, to better cope with the symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Now, we're talking about uh, post-traumatic stress. There's also depression we need to keep in mind mm -hmm. because with all the stressors, and the jury and, and all of things going on, it can also increase our symptoms of depression. And depression then can also increase symptoms of post-traumatic stress, right? So do we have effective treatment um, available? Well, That's we always place. appreciate your visits coming into Thank TVO so and much, helping Steve. shed a little more light on all Thank of these topics that we much. discussed. That's Dr. Caddy Kamkar. Uh, so good of you to come in again from CAMH, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. Thanks again. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.